Okay, so let's take a look at how to do the pinky on this fingerless glove. Let me show you the first one that I knit. You notice that I, I didn't actually finish out one of the colors when I got to the top of the hand, and that's because I'd reached the point where the hand was long enough. So make your own judgment call about you know, how long that hand needs to be to meet the bottom part of the fingers. So what I decided to do instead of finishing out that stripe and making the hand too long is just to use that color to make the pinky. So I'm going to do the same thing on this second mitt. I, on purpose, I didn't start these mitts on the same part of the color sequence. So, but I've been trying to match where the colors stop and start, even so, um, as I go up the mitt. So I started on yellow and orange, and then I'm you know, keeping the same number of color stripes as I go up. So the brown and the gray actually correspond. The yellow and the orange do. I'll come back and do a thumb in orange. The blue and the white do. And so I did the same number of rows in gray that I did over here in brown. So the instructions tell us that now for the pinky on the next round, you want to work a certain number of stitches in rib as set. In my case, it's stitch 46. number 46. I'm 46 stitches into this round. Now the next step is to use a yarn needle to slip the rest of the stitches onto waste yarn. So we're basically going to slip all of the stitches except for the pinky onto waste yarn. And it says to actually, in my case, do slip the remaining 30 stitches of this round. So that just means take all of these stitches that remain in this round, all of them up to the marker, and slip them onto waste yarn, just like we did with the thumb stitches. So if you have any questions about what I'm doing here, go back and take a look at the video where we talk about how to slip the thumb stitches onto waste yarn. This is exactly the same procedure, and it's just holding them aside while we do something else. You could use a, neat, a knitting needle for this too. A circular needle would probably be best. Okay, so there's the 30 stitches that finish out that round. I'll just go ahead and remove the stitch marker. And it says, in my case, to slip also the first 30 stitches of the following round. So that just means past where that beginning of the round marker was, slip another 30 stitches onto the needle. And as I said before, this is basically just putting all of the stitches except for the pinky stitches onto waist yarn so that they're out of the way and we can work on the pinky uninterrupted. So you'll have, in my case, 16 stitches left on the needle. How many stitches you have will depend on which size you're making. Two, four, six, eight. Just these last two. Okay. Just get this yarn out of the way. All right, so now there are all of the, the other stitches. We're going to come back later to these and turn those into fingers as well. But for right now, we're just going to work these 16 stitches right here. And you may have these on double points or two circulars, any, anything like that is fine. You just want to have 16 stitches left. Here's the working yarn. So that means this is the next stitch we're going to work. And you just continue to work in the rib as set. And that just means, you know, when you look below, you've got, see those little purl bumps? It's time to purl. So you just do the same thing to those stitches that you've always been doing to them. And there are two knit stitches. And so on. And you just continue to knit this finger until it's up to that knuckle or a little past. And I give you a, me a suggested measurement, but you can make it any length you like. You can even make it all the way up to the tip of your fingers if you like. It's up to you. Um, 
one thing that if you if you find that your fingers are larger than most people's and you want to give your fingers a little extra breathing room. I'm backing up for a moment so that I can show you what to do in your case. Let's say you find that these fingers are not big enough for you, that the size of the glove is fine, but that you actually need a wider finger. Well, you can cast on a couple of extra stitches here, or maybe even just one will do. Um, and the way you do that is the same way that you cast on stitches back down here when you started the hand. So you can do that same knitted cast on, get this yarn out of the way, you can do that same knitted cast on right here where the pinky starts and give yourself a little extra cushion. And it's perfectly fine if it doesn't mesh into the knit two purl two rib because um, nobody's going to see that part of your finger anyway. It's that part that's going to be right in the corner between your two fingers. So you could always just, like let's say you decide you need just a little more room. You could always just add one or two, or if you really, really want to keep the continuity of the rib, you would need to add four stitches in here. And then just keep going like normal and those extra stitches really aren't going to show up because like I say they'll be right in that corner between your fingers. Either way whether you cast on extra stitches or not like I say just work in knit two purl two rib until you get up to the length of finger that you want and then we'll come back and show you how to do the other fingers.